Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com with another quick tip for families in intensive care. So today I want to talk about how you can control the narrative when your loved one is in intensive care. Yesterday I made a video about how to verify that what the ICU team is telling you is accurate. So you can refer back to yesterday's video. And today I want to, I want to talk about you know how you can narrate or how you can construct the narrative while you have a loved one in intensive care. Because if you don't create the narrative, the ICU team will definitely create it for you and you don't want that to happen. Now, I do understand that nobody is sitting at home and wondering, oh, what should I be doing if my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, God forbid, spouse, child, God forbid, goes into ICU and what should I do then? I understand no, no one is worrying about that sitting at home and you shouldn't. But... If you're watching this, chances are that you are in a situation like that where you need to create a narrative and you need to do it rather quickly and urgently because you don't have a lot of time. And, you know, the ICU team has probably already told you how negative everything is and that it's all doom and gloom and that chances for your loved one to survive are very slow, uh, are very low and chances that your loved one will have any quality of life if they do survive in the future are very slim. You know, I'm sure you've heard it all before by now. So here are some facts and let's look at the facts. Approximately 90% of intensive care patients survive. So, you know, the whole narration around, you know, that your loved one doesn't or won't survive is simply inaccurate. The overwhelming majority of patients in intensive care actually survive. So that's number one. Number two, the whole notion that, you know, your loved one won't have any quality of life in the future is just a perception. Quality of life is a subjective measure, not an objective measure. You know, what you might perceive as a good quality of life, I may disagree with and vice versa. You know, this is a very subjective measure and not up to the ICU team to decide what quality of life is acceptable for you and your family, you know. So that's number two. Number three, you need to get one step ahead of the intensive care team. And how can you do that? You might think, oh, my, my goodness, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a nurse. How can I get one step ahead of them? Well, you can get one step ahead of them by working with us, for example. You know, we can predict what's going to happen next. We, we know the patterns. You know, I have worked in intensive care for over 20 years in three different countries. I also worked as a nurse unit manager in intensive care for over five years. I've been consulting and advocating for families in intensive care for the last 10 years all around the world. So, you know, I can recognize the patterns. I know what's going to come and I've got a team of experts w working with me. We can predict, you know, what's going to happen next. We can give you treatment options. You know, we can uh, review medical records in real time and give you that crucial second opinion. Also, uh, we can, or we are um, representing you in family meetings, for example, we are asking questions on your behalf we are with doctors, with nurses, you know, we can help you understand what's really happening. From experience, ICU teams not even are not even telling you half of the story of what's really happening, unless you know what to ask for. And again, that's what we can help you with here. So that is my quick tip for today, how you can create your own narrative when your loved one is in intensive care. Uh, if you have a loved one in intensive care, go to intensivecarehotline.com, call us on one of the numbers on the top of our website, or simply send us an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. Um, also, have a look at our membership for families in intensive care at intensivecaresupport.org. There you have access to me and my team 24 hours a day in a membership area and via email. And we answer all questions intensive care related. If you need a medical record review for your loved one in intensive care, please contact us as well. We review medical records in real time when you have a loved one in intensive care, but we also re review them after intensive care but we highly recommend that you get that crucial second opinion in real time.
Now, subscribe to my YouTube channel for regular updates for families in intensive care. Share the video with your friends and families. Click the like button, click the notification bell and comment below what you want to see next or what questions and insights you have from this video. Thanks for watching. This is Patrick Hotzel from intensivecarehotline.com and I'll talk to you in a few days. Take care.